My name is Anthony Gerbic, and the title of my distinguished microwave lecture is Extreme Field Control with Electromagnetic Metasurfaces. In this lecture, I will talk about controlling electromagnetic fields through material design, in particular, surface design. I will describe how fine structuring or patterning allows a wide range of electromagnetic material properties, enabling extreme field manipulation. To better understand these engineered materials or surfaces, also known as metamaterials or metasurfaces, let's have a look at conventional materials and how they are characterized electromagnetically. In general, the electric and magnetic properties of a material can be described by two material parameters or fudge factors, permittivity and permeability. For example, a glass of water has a permittivity of 77 at gigahertz frequencies which falls off to about 1.79 at visible wavelengths. Commercial circuit boards, on the other hand, have a permittivity of about four. Ferrites, like those found at the ends of computer cables to prevent unwanted radiation, have magnetic responses with permeabilities of 20 and beyond. Materials with electromagnetic or magnetoelectric parameters can also exist. In these esoteric materials, the constitutive relations couple electric and magnetic fields. Material parameters such as permeability and permittivity account for the effects of electric and magnetic polarization. They describe the homogenized or spatially averaged properties of a material. We can perform averaging since typical wavelengths of interest are much larger than the molecular size or atomic spacing of a material. For instance, visible wavelengths are in the hundreds of nanometers range while atomic spacing is on the order of angstroms, a difference of four orders of magnitude. So averaging makes sense. Therefore, to explain classical electromagnetic phenomena, we rely on permittivity and permeability instead of looking at atomic interactions. In the field of metamaterials, we devise our own meta-atoms or metamolecules to develop designer materials, for example, uh, the designer materials. For example, we can texture surfaces at a very fine or sub-wavelength scale to customize the average electromagnetic surface properties. As shown to the right, if the wavelength is long enough, the impinging wave cannot resolve the fine features or meta-atoms of the metasurface and simply senses the average response. So electromagnetic metasurfaces are finely patterned surfaces whose intricate patterns or textures dictate their electromagnetic properties. Conventional field shaping devices, such as lenses and prescription eyeglasses, rely on thickness, propagation length to manipulate electromagnetic waves through interference. In contrast, metasurfaces manipulate electromagnetic waves across negligible thicknesses through surface interactions. Metasurfaces can be described macroscopically in terms of surface polarizabilities that relate dipole moments to average fields similar to how volumetric materials are described using effective material parameters, permittivity and permeability. As electrical engineers, we also like to describe them in terms of surface impedances or admittances. But why would we want to design surfaces with tailored electromagnetic parameters? Well, there are a few obvious reasons. Controlling the phase, polarization and amplitude of radiated electromagnetic waves is critical to a wide range of wireless systems ranging from communications to remote sensing. In quasi-optical systems, for example, polarization control is typically achieved with combinations of linear polarizers and wave plates, while phase control, phase is controlled using dielectric lenses and reflectors. Such conventional systems are bulky and often do not lend themselves to microfabrication strategies or nanophotonic integration. So let's completely rethink electromagnetic design with this newfound power to arbitrarily control surface properties in order to completely transform fields across a boundary and imagine a new generation of ultra compact devices with unparalleled field control. For instance, let's replace bulky combinations of standard optical microwave or microwave elements, example, polarizers, wave plates, or curved lenses with sub-wavelength thickness surfaces, and do away with reflector antennas and replace them with directly fed flat panel antennas 
that not only con control phase, but also amplitude. And how will we do all this? Well, through sub-wavelength structuring, we will construct surfaces from small metallic or dielectric scatters, small electric and magnetic dipoles, meta atoms, rods and loops and loop rods, as I like to call them, and other small inclusions. Collections of scatters such as these can enable a wide range of control over surface properties. Control over surface properties amounts to control over fields, radiation, guidance, transmission and reflection, scattering in general. So the ultimate goal of this twisted pursuit is total and complete wave domination to arbitrarily control electromagnetic fields scattered from or guided by arbitrary surfaces. A few years ago, my research group showed that metasurfaces consisting of electric and magnetic dipole pairs can be designed to radiate unidirectionally allowing reflectionless wavefront control with high efficiency. In other words, one can transform an incident field to a desired transmitted field by simply inducing the right combination of electric and magnetic currents along a surface. We called these reflectionless surfaces Huygens metasurfaces, since they control electromagnetic wavefronts in a manner similar to those envisioned by Christian Huygens in 1678 when he developed the well-known principle that carries his name. As can be seen in the photograph, capacitively and inductively loaded traces are used to realize electric dipoles and capacitively loaded loops to realize magnetic dipoles. By properly designing these electric and magnetic dipoles, we showed that it's possible to redirect a normally incident beam, for example, to an angle of 45 degrees with high efficiencies at microwave frequencies, with only a single layer of inclusions. Instead of loops and rods, one can also stack pattern metallic claddings to achieve the same effect in field control. An asymmetric cascade with three distinct claddings provides independent control of the electric magnetic and magnetoelectric properties. This is an alternate approach to using loops, rods, and loop rods. That's actually amenable to planar micro and nanofabrication strategies. All dielectric metastructures shown in the bottom left can also be engineered at the expense of somewhat thicker profiles. Using such an approach, ultra-compact polarization controlling devices can be devised from microwaves to optical frequencies, as shown on this slide. In addition to tailoring the transmission phase of a wavefront using, using metasurfaces, in order to, for example, control polarization, a pair of metasurfaces can also be used to control both the phase and amplitude distribution of a wavefront without reflection, polarization, or absorption loss. Many applications require field distributions with specified amplitude and phase profiles. In antenna pattern synthesis, phase and amplitude control is used to steer and beam shape. It's also required in the design of quasi-optical elements that can change a beam's profile. One such example is a beam expander. Pixelated control over the phase and amplitude of microwaves or light across a plane allows one to recreate a 3D scene. So controlling phase and amplitude is important to controlling radar signatures and the development of high-performance 3D displays, even optical camouflage. The challenge, however, is spatially controlling the amplitude and phase of an electromagnetic waves without loss. We have proposed a pair of phase-only metasurfaces to do this, whereby the first metasurface projects a targeted power density profile onto the second metasurface, while the second metasurface provides a phase correction. Together, the two metasurfaces allow complex valued amplitude and phase control of an aperture field. I just showed that using two metasurfaces allows amplitude and phase control of an aperture field. The reflectionless metasurface pairs manipulate the propagating spectrum in order to transform the phase and amplitude profiles of wavefronts without loss. By restricting wavefront transformations to the propagating spectrum, the separation between the paired metasurfaces, however, remains multiple wavelengths. To overcome this restriction on metasurface separation, we recently proposed mode converting metasurfaces. Mode converting metasurfaces impress abrupt phase and amplitude discontinuities that can arbitrarily transform wavefronts over a sub-wavelength distance. 
They manipulate both the propagating and the evanescent spectra. Mode converting metasurfaces consist of tightly coupled stacks of metasurfaces, metallic patterns textured at a sub wavelength scale. They exploit higher order evanescent coupling between pattern sheets to achieve abrupt amplitude discontinuities. These evanescent or surface waves efficiently redistribute the field transversely, allowing extreme wavefront transformations. The multiple metasurfaces provide added degrees of freedom, allowing fields to be controlled even close to the mode converter interface. These devices will find application in low profile antenna systems, as well as the design of near field radiating systems. Such precise control of the evanescent and propagating spectrum allows for the design of flat reflectors or next generation reflect arrays that can control not only reflected phase, but also amplitude, allowing for simultaneous beam steering and shaping. Shown on the bottom left are the amplitude and phase profiles of an incident cylindrical wave and a desired scattered field, which in this case is, the far field pat is a far field pattern with a tailored distribution side lobe envelope. The metasurface design is shown in the top right, plotted, is the lossless impedance profile of this flat reflector needed to achieve the targeted radiation pattern. This impedance profile can be implemented very simply using pattern metallic patterning. And why restrict ourselves to planar metasurfaces? In this talk, I will also describe conformal metasurface designs, cylindrical metasurfaces that are sh shown here which will find a variety of applications ranging from scattering control, illusion electromagnetics, as well as the generation of orbital angular momentum beams or vortices. The numerous degrees of freedom afforded by metasurfaces or metastructures allows us to develop multi-input, multi-output microwave devices through inverse design. This can range from antenna beam forming to different types of rapid information pre-processing. Inverse design, Microwave metastructures can transform multiple inputs to multiple outputs as electromagnetic waves propagate and couple through them. The association between inputs and outputs are encoded in the metastructure's electromagnetic properties, allowing processing at the speed of light. I will describe our efforts to develop a theoretical understanding of MIMO metastructures, build also how we build a computational platform for their synthesis, and realized proof of concept antenna systems based on these concepts. Finally, in this presentation, I will touch upon time and space-time varying metasurfaces, which can surpass the constraints imposed by linear time invariant systems. These metasurfaces can manipulate the spatial and temporal spectrum of impinging fields, offering non-reciprocal responses, as well as other effects such as simultaneous beam steering, and frequency conversion. 